Hunt with passion. Never stop casting. Chase the dream. Welcome to Season 3 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Sponsored by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. What's up guys and welcome back to yet another very, very exciting vlog series here. Uh, I hope everyone, all my viewers, sponsors, fans, that you're all staying healthy during this COVID-19 pandemic. These are very scary times for all of us. And if you are hunkered down at home, I have some very exciting news to share with you guys today. The release of what was a show special only lure is now available. Grape Flame is now available for you and for all of us musky nuts. It is in full scale production now. Here is the 700. Here is the 500 Booker Tail Tinsel models. These lures are absolutely killers for me. You can see that this one here, uh, this 500 series Booker Tail in Grape Flame has been in, uh, you know, it's this one's been thrown for years actually. So some of that uh, beautiful purple tinsel color has uh, diminished uh, in, in the sunlight and everything, but the blade still has some phenomenal color. And this one, this 700, brand new, right out of the box, is just, oh, it's just aching to be thrown. And I want to start this vlog off with a story about one of my biggest personal best Wisconsin muskies taken on the old 700 Grape Flame Booker Tail Tinsel. And it's a really interesting story. So a few years back, I was guiding some uh, longtime clients of mine, two brothers. And, you know, over the years, we've, we've kind of pro progressed from catching, you know, small and mid-sized muskies to really targeting and chasing big muskies. And those of you out there who've spent time muskie fishing know that certain lakes are big fish producers, low action, but big fish pay off, and certain lakes are your action producers. So on this particular guide trip with the two brothers... I'm really focusing on big musky lakes. And we start off our day, and this is uh, day two, we'd already caught a couple muskies uh, the day before we started off, you know, putting a couple in the net, some action musky lakes, and we had a great time. Day two though, is the big fish hunt. And we start off on a deep, clear body of water. And again, we go into this day knowing that we're chasing a trophy musky. And uh, on that particular morning, it was, uh, it was kind of um, the bluebird sky, and I knew we, we, again, I'll get to this, but we had some weather coming up, and uh, we only raised one muskie on a downsized 500 booger tail tinsel on that, that clear water. So I said, okay, look, guys, we got this storm coming up in the afternoon, and, and, you know me, and we have moon overhead at 2.40 p.m. Now, it's about 11.30. We, again, we've only raised one muskie, which, again, on the waters we're fishing is not surprising because these are these are trophy musky waters. So if you do get one to bite, it's going to be big. So I said, guys, let's have a little lunch break and let's change waters. I got a different body of water that's extremely dark, really tannic, got some serious tannic brown stain to it. I said, let's change waters. I have a feeling. Sometimes you just get that feeling. Hunters, musky anglers out there, you know what I'm talking about. You get that sixth sense feeling where you just know this could be a big win for us. So I said, let's change waters. I got a lake that's stained. It's a big fish producer. And I think it's, I think it's ready to pop out a big one. So we make the change. And now we fished on this body of water for about an hour and a half, maybe an hour or so. And one of the brothers, this is a Sunday, it was a two day uh, musky hunt. One of the brothers had to go back home. He said, Chaz, I'm so sorry, my wife, is texting me. She said, when are you coming home? And I'm like, I remember I said, Chris, you, you can't go. I said, I said, moon overhead is 240. It's about 130 right now. Something's going to happen. I know the spot. We've got to go fish this spot. I said, and he, and he you know, I'd, and I'd already buy, I already bought him some time. I think I even texted the wife. I said, hey, look, you know, Chris can't come home yet. This is a uh, musky guy, Chaz speaking here. I'm like, we, we got this moon overhead thing, and uh, let me just say that it wasn't going our way, because I was, I was trying to buy him some time, and I did, but I couldn't buy him anymore. He said, I gotta, go, I gotta be home uh, for my kids and for dinner, and I said, okay. So 
at this point now, so Chris had left and it's just me and the other brother. And uh, we're, we're sitting there and he goes, Chaz, I know we're, we're uh, on a big fish spot, but and usually you, you know me out there, especially guide clients and uh, fans of the show. When I'm guiding, I'm, I consider myself like an, an old school guide. Unless I'm asked, I'm in the back of the boat. You know, I'm running my, my uh, Minn Kota Vantage. I'm working out of the tiller. That's why I love the tiller, because I can work out. I can bark orders like an angry old grumpy guide. Do this, faster there, cast there. You know, I'm sitting back there. I'm, I'm controlling. I'm guiding. And the guy goes, Chaz, I want you to fish up in front. Take the bow position. He's like, he goes, I don't care if you catch a muskie. I said, let's get a big fish in the boat. And, you know, I said, Bill, I said, are you sure, man? I said, I'm really comfortable just sitting, sitting back here and guiding you. I said, I love guiding. And this is what I, this is why I, I, I do this is I love seeing you with the big fish. And he says, no, I, I caught one yesterday, man. Let's just get a really big one in the boat. And I said, okay, man. I said, well, we got the storm moving in. And we had a northwest wind, which was kind of unique to this, but a big storm moving in, combining with the moon overhead. So we got a really unique situation here. I'm like, oh man, I said, this is awesome. So the wind is hitting a certain spot, right? And I, and again, it's overcast, light chop on the water, five, 10 miles an hour, northwest. Um, you know, it's it's just huge, the humidity's rising. I mean, it's just like, man, this is happening. And I, I say to Bill, I said, okay. I said, if you really want me to cast out of the front of the boat, I will. I said, what do you want? I said, I'd recommend, I got two lures I'm going to recommend for you. I got the 700 Booker Tail Tinsel, and I got a Top Raider. And Bill opted for the Top Raider. Loves top water fishing for muskies. And given the conditions, I thought either the 700 or the Top Raider was going to pull a big fish. And I really wanted to complement each other. I said, if we're going to be fishing together, we've got to complement each other. And Bill opted for the Top Raider. I opted for the old 700 Booker Tail Tinsel in Grape Flame. And let me tell you, we, we pull up on, on the big fish spot. The wind's hitting it right. We're about, you know, 20, 25 minutes ahead of schedule on, on the, uh, the major period moon overhead. And I remember I take this cast, and to this point, I'm expecting either of us to catch the muskie. You know, I know it's low percentage water, but I'm like, with these conditions, I'm like, holy cow. And his brother, I told Chris, I said, something's going to happen. Don't go. But again, I couldn't, I couldn't stop him. The wife, they had dinner plans. And uh, anyway, we go along. And I remember I made this cast way out in front of the boat. I'm trying to really open up space for Bill to work that top reader. So I'm really casting off the bow. I mean, I'm, I'm throwing at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. I'm casting, uh, to a certain extent, off structure. I'm, I'm trying to leave Bill with all, all the structure to fish himself. And I remember I tick a weed, there's this big, I call it the boomerang bar, there's this big, um, you know, weed point that, that curls around like a boomerang. And I fire one out because I'm trying to find that tip of the boomerang bar. And I fire one off to the left, maybe, you know, um, oh, I'm, you know, maybe I'm at like uh, nine o'clock or, or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm way out. I'm way out over open water. I miss it. I come back closer to, to noon one o'clock and I, I tick a weed because I'm kind of slow rolling it because I want to see if I can find weeds with the 700 and all of a sudden, boom, I mean, I set the hook. I'm like, Bill, I got one, man. And I knew I had a big fish just the way this thing was fighting. It went on the left side of the bow, went on the right side of the bow. And I remember Bill is sitting there going, holy cow, Jez, that's the biggest musk I've ever seen. And you know, I'm just, I'm free spooling the thing and I'm coaching him because now, now Bill's got the net in the water, you know, and the muskie's still green. This thing's just going crazy at this point. And, uh, I'm like, Bill, get the net out of the water, get the net out of the water. Not yet, not yet. And, you know, I, we're, we're, we're definitely communicating at this point and I'm not yelling at him, but you know, in the heat of the moment, I'm like, dude, get that net out of the water. This big fish, these big fish are, as you've seen, on a lot of these these great videos that I put out and Joe's put out, and you know, of the of big muskies, they don't come easy. You got to really tire them out. You don't want to horse big fish into the net. And Bill did a great job. He yanks that big big uh, power catch out of the water. My big big musky net. I fight it in, and eventually we land the musky. And we took some amazing photos, which you're what you're seeing right now. And again, 
it's it's really um, no surprise to me now that I've been. And by the way, I should mention, I suppose, that original that that big muskie. And again, that's one of my one of my longest Wisconsin muskies to date. Caught on the 700 grape flame, and that was a lure that I I was testing for Joe Booker. He had it lying around his garage in the initial stages when when he created the color. And I, I did one of those cameraman specials where I said, oh, Joe, I said, hey, can I do some prototype testing with that lure out on the Three Lakes chain? Can I, and I think the watercolor is going to be perfect. Can I go throw it on the Eagle River chain? And he goes, you know, classic Joe. He's so, so gracious. Sure, Chaz, take the, take my brand new lure and go test it. So I did. And of course, on this guide trip and, and, uh, you know, we scored on this giant, but this became normal. This became uh, a secret weapon for me, and it has been for many years until uh, the old show special, Great Flame, was released uh, just a year ago uh, at, the, at the sports shows. Until then, Great Flame has been a secret color. A few, a few of the area guides, uh, Lunker Lou, and uh, you know, a few of the classics have, have been using it under secrecy, and uh, it's, it's produced some awesome muskies. And I want to talk about a little bit about why Grape Flame has been such a great producing color in stained water. So if you fish stained water, and I'm not saying it doesn't work on clear water, because it certainly does, but it really, really works well on stained water. I want to go into the science. You guys know I'm a high school science teacher doing my e-learning right now. I'm teaching via the internet on my, with my online resources, which is, which is working fine. But, you know, I, I want to talk about the science behind this color scheme. We've got this chartreuse and orange, and we've got this kind of neon purple color here. And why is this so good in stained water? Well, it starts with our tannic brown water systems that I fish here in northern Wisconsin. Uh, and that tannic brown color is often called red. It's called red waters because it has that reddish hue to it from the, from, um, the tannins that are released by these these uh, you know tamarack trees, and it really stains the water to a, to a certain extent with with a couple other important factors in there. But it's we call it tannic brown, and it's also called red water. In the reddish hue to it, um, if you know anything about the color spectrum and and about color absorbency, is that red color actually absorbs red color. So red absorbs red, and if you look at I'm going to put up the color spectrum here. If you look at that. The red color, as far as wavelength con is concerned, we'll get into, um, you know, our, our chemistry side of things, our uh, quantum mechanics, if you want to call it. The, the red wavelength has a, well, the red color has a wavelength of about um, 700 nanometers, okay? And interestingly, so, and so red stained water absorbs red color, okay? So that's on one side of the spectrum here. On the other side of the spectrum, you have purple, okay? The purple wavelength is opposite on our on what we can see visually on the color spectrum between about 400 and 700 nanometers. Purple is on the other side at 400 nanometers in wavelength. And it is not very much absorbed by that red color scheme in the water. And in addition, you've got chartreuse, which as that that yellow uh, chartreuse color is about 600 nanometers. So what I'm trying to get at, and this is my this is my color theory on why grape flame is such a great producer in stained water, is that these two primary colors on this lure are not absorbed by the reddish hue of the tannic brown color in our our stained waters, which means these colors stand out to the musky, and to a certain extent. Orange is, is, is closer to the red, which is absorbed. So what this does is it creates contrast. And contrast is a really, really important thing. If you look at any of the natural colors on bait fish that are found in our waters here, it, I don't care where you fish, if you're in, in, on, you know, in Ontario or Minnesota or Michigan or here in Wisconsin or Indiana or Ohio or Pennsylvania or all of our great muskie fisheries, New York, you name it. A lot of the, the fish that muskies are chasing, well, almost every one of them, have what we call contrast. And, and even from the simplest uh, sense, uh, most of these fish, if not all of them, have white bellies and a darker color on the, you know, the, the midsection and the top of their body. So there's major contrast. So muskies, by, uh, in, in a very scientific way, seek out prey items that have contrast. 
you know, for example, the yellow perch would be a great example with those classic, you know, black bars contrasting with the yellow uh, orange color of the perch. I mean, it's contrast. That's why those bars, that's why, that's why these different color, you go from chartreuse to orange to purple, it's contrast. And that's one of the biggest reasons I think grape flame has produced so well for me in stained waters. Now, uh, you know, let's get to a little bit of the why and when. I have had, and you can see how beat up this 500 is. I mean, I can't tell you how many muskies this little 500 Booker Tail uh, in Grape Flame has caught, Booker Tail Tinsel. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the modifications. You can see this giant, I call that the meat hanger, man. This thing is dangerous. This thing's caught a lot of big muskies and it still looks great. Absolutely love it. But let's talk a little bit about the, about the why and when. The 700 Booker Tail, I'll start with, and I, maybe I'll just start with the color here just real quick. The, you know, we're talking stained water, but I will say this in sunny conditions and in overcast conditions, in both. So we, we've got, you know, dark water clarity. Okay, that's the consistent theme here for me and my success with this lure on Lake of the Woods and on our stained waters here in Violas Oneida County, Forest County, Price, Iron County. Uh, the, the 700 and the 500, both in that grape flame, produce very well in both sunny conditions and overcast conditions. So in both, uh, you know, environmental lightings, this color produces great. But I just wanted to kind of talk about a couple of things here. You know, the, the 500 and the 700 with this with this color now that is that is gonna go mainstream, these are both search lures. I use these blade lures, you know, they're inline spinners. I can work them fast, I can work them slow, I can still roll them. But generally speaking, these two lures are search lures. I'm trying to find active muskies. And as I have uh, previously released, I've, I've done a, a podcast, or sorry, a, a vlog exclusively on the 700. Uh, you know, this is a lure, guys, that has consistent, I, I, I showed you the picture, one of my longest Wisconsin muskies here um, at just about 49 inches. That was a, a close, close to 50, 49 on that fish. Uh, this this lure has produced some of my largest muskies to date. If actually my, my biggest Wisconsin muskies have come on the 700 Bruker Tail Tinsel. And... Um, including, and I, you know, I, I got to show the picture of Walter, uh, one of my other guide clients, Chris, wanted me to bring this up. So here it is. Uh, here, here is his brother-in-law with Walter, our biggest client caught muskie of 2019, measuring in, I believe, at 48 and a half inches on, well, you guessed it, stained water and the 700 grape flame. But again, I guess I'm getting at, a lot of big fish have been caught on the 700 series and I've caught these fish, um, you know, in May, June, July, all the way till ice up in November. But if you were to ask me, when's the killer time? Ooh, August and September consistently have produced my biggest on 700. Now the 500, boy, I kind of joke around about this. It's a guide rule. The 500 Booker Tail, for me, is a, is a guide. It's a guide rule that someone is always throwing the 500. Why? because it produces so many muskies. Oh my gosh. If you're not throwing the 500, you're missing out. You're missing out on muskies. We would be, as, as, as a guide, you know, I would be doing my customers a disservice. If we're not throwing the 500, we're missing out. The 500 must be thrown. It's an excellent castback lure as a downsizer. Um, it, 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 it produces really best. I mean, it produces, I mean, you could throw this thing when you got a storm coming in, you're gonna catch muskies. But for me, why I rely on the seven, on the 500, excuse me, is because under poor environmental conditions, so high pressure, bluebird skies, or just, let's just say the fish aren't moving for some reason on your 700s, your 800s, your top range, they're not moving, downsizing to the 500 really seems to produce action for myself, my clients for filming, my buddies, you name it. If you've got excess boating pressure, let's say it's 4th of July, let's say it's it's your mid-season peak with boaters, jet skiers, tubers, and people are pounding the water, downsize. The 500 will produce more action than my larger presentations. And I've still got some mega big muskies coming up here for season three musky mastery. You're gonna see that this exact lure I'm holding, this little 500, whew, is it caught some big muskies. Oh man, don't be fooled as I was initially, that this little lure won't produce big muskies, because you would be wrong. Big, big muskies will eat small presentations under the right conditions on the right spots. This little, little lure will produce big fish. And 
Um, as I've said with all my blades, you know, they are at home in weeds, rocks, for suspended fish, in timber, you name it. I throw blades, I throw the Booker Tail lineup on all sorts of cover. And, uh, you know, if you, I, I want to keep this, this uh, special bonus vlog a little bit shorter, so I'm not going to go over the technique in, in great detail here, because if you want to see technique, I've got a number of vlogs out in season three here about the 700, about the double eight, and uh, coming up soon uh, about the double 10, Booger Tail Tinsel lineup. But the biggest things that I talk about when, when with regard to blades and technique is speed control. You know, whether that's bursting to trigger strikes, a trigger aggression with speed, or whether that's speed to cover water quickly, as in we, we started this vlog saying, look, these are search lures, or if it's slowing down. Let's say um, you've got sluggish muskies. Let's say you've got cold water, which is the biggest reason I'm slowing down, cold water, okay? So we'll leave it at that, and that speed is not just for retrieving. Don't think that I'm just talking speed on the retrieve because it also is it's just critical when it comes to the figure eight and again I've gone into great detail on this on some other vlog series now uh let's just go here to uh, some of the equipment let's talk uh reels this is one of my favorite reels this is the Dio Alexa um 400 HP so this has got the big power handle on it um it's the HD series I really you know actually for both for me when I'm fishing blades I really like, uh, whether it's the 500 or the 700, I really like a big reel. I like the big power handle. But importantly, let's talk, uh, you know, uh, gear ratio. This is a 6.3, 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, to me, this is middle of the road. I really like this gear ratio. Um, and if you have more questions about that, uh, we can go into it. So I'm not using downsized reels, even with the 500, because look at the keel weight on that sucker. I mean... The 500 fish is big. I've, I've said that since day one. This this revamped, uh, you know, rebuilt 500 series fishes just like the 700 in, in weight and casting ability. And, you know, I, I fish both of these on St. Croix Legend Elites, which I, ha which I have here all sheathed up. Uh, they haven't been unveiled just yet for open water here in Wisconsin because we're, we're getting close. But uh, St. Croix Legend Elite 9 foot medium heavy power fast action rod is my ultimate rod for fishing the Booker Tail lineup on. Joe Booker Outdoors B Sprayed, which is, again, what I've got here. And this is that tannic brown color. Now, this line, as you can see here, still has a wonderful brown tannic color to it. Um, has it lost some of that initial color right out of the box? Of course, they all do. But um, Beast Braid, uh, and, you, and, and if you're if you're looking into the color for the first time, you'll find, uh, I'm sure in reviews or talk to somebody who fishes it like myself, uh, it doesn't lose its color very much. It really stays uh, true to its color, which I love. And the thing that I love about Beast Braid is it's tough. I mean, you, you feel this line. You can almost probably hear that on the microphone. You feel this line, and it's 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 tough. It's tough. I was involved, uh, you know, just very excited to say I was involved in the testing of a number of these lines when Joe Booger Outdoors was coming out with a Beast Braid fishing line. I tested a bunch of different types of fishing lines. This is the one that I liked the best. And it's just, it's a tough line. It's, it's, uh, you can just, it just has a tough feel to it. And um, it's really a fantastic line. And then the leader is... Uh, I believe it's called the Premium Single Strand, and I'll put a link to this in the description. The Premium Single Strand Ball Bearing Swivel. Uh, it's the, the old, we call it the 981. Um, it's it's a great leader. And then lastly, as far as equipment's concerned, you can see it up. Oh, sorry. This one, hooks are sharp. I'll talk about the hooks in just a second. Uh, here, you can see this one's right out of the box. On the line tie there, there is no split ring. Let's see if that hook's still sharp. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here on every single one of my my lures if it's a crankbait if it's a if it's a booker tail uh doesn't matter what it is shallow raider jb rattler i've got a number seven generally speaking a number seven split ring on the top and i cut the the snap off on my my uh single strand ball bearing swivel the old piano wire leader there each one of my lures has a split ring and i take this split ring direct to the leader um now you can't use these even though these are pretty much bulletproof in, in all cases, you would say. Um, I do replace these about every season or so. When they start getting kind of rusted every once in a while, I will replace these. Um, 
but that is uh, really what, what I do as far as equipment. And then modifications. Really the only, I, I guess I would say there's two modifications that I make to these lures, and this one, this particular, which has caught some of my biggest ones, look at that. And, and do you need to do this? No. I mean, here, here is a 700 that came right out of the box, okay? And it's got a, a big old 5 um, This This is a uh, black nickel uh, 5 aught hook there. It's got the long shank. And, and these, these, are just, these are just amazing treble hooks for nearly 100%, nearly 100% of these circumstances. But uh, when I'm fishing trophy waters, or let's say, you know, I, I, I talked about this story initially. When I'm on water that I know I'm going to have a crack at maybe one fish, but it's probably going to be 45 inches or longer. Um, I, I like to use a big treble hook. And here you can see this is actually a 6 aught hook. So it's it's quite a bit bigger. It's a wide gap, which makes it even look larger. It's got a it's got a real wide gap here, and it's short shank. I love the short shank because, as you can see, when this lure starts moving in the water column, that tinsel hides. That's why I love the tinsels. They hide the big hooks and the big equipment in here. I call this the meat hanger. This is just deadly. And uh, the one last modification I'll make occasionally, especially with these 500s, I will add a grub or twister tail to the end of it to even give it a little bit of a bigger profile or a bigger size. You know, here's the 700, here's the 500. So they're quite a bit different. You can add a grub on either of these, but a lot of times I'll put them on the, the 500s to give it maybe more of like a 600 size to it. So guys, there you have it. The new color, Grape Flame. I mean, it's it's very much new in the sense that now it's, it's being produced officially, and that's really exciting. Um, for all of us because it went from a show color that people bought up and there was really none of left. I mean, I've been, I've been holding on to these things like crazy to now they are officially being produced by the JBO plant in Wisconsin, uh, made in the USA. Just one of my all time, all time best producers of musky action in the state of Wisconsin and in Canada, great flame. I would say it is with, I, I'd say, you know, comparing this, let's say, where would you rank grape flame as far as productivity for me? Don't tell anybody, <laughs> but it'd be right up there with Goldilocks. Grape Flame is uh, number one or two for producers in stained water. So new color series, guys. I really hope, whew, man, those hooks are sticky right out of the box, even though you still got to sharpen them. <laughs> uh, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this bonus vlog here on the new release of the Grape Flame color. It is just awesome. And this really gets me fired up for open water. Guys, as always, thanks for watching.